Welcome to a quick note. Today we dive into the mesmerizing world of ocean colors. If you're fascinated by the shades of the sea, you're in for a treat. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more quick notes on intriguing topics. Ever notice how the ocean looks different depending on where you are? If you're staring at it from the coast of Maine, it has a different color than if you're squinting at it from a sunny beach in Greece. So why is the ocean blue? And why does it have so many shades? Let's figure it out. Let's talk about whether the ocean is really blue. According to NASA oceanographer Jean Carl Feldman, the water in the ocean isn't actually blue, it's clear. The color you see on the ocean's surface depends on how deep it is and what's in and under the water. So even though it might look blue, the ocean water is in reality clear. Let's break down why the ocean looks blue. When you look at a glass of water, it seems clear because light easily passes through it. However, if a body of water is deep enough and sunlight doesn't bounce off the bottom, it appears blue. Here's the basic science. Sunlight has different wavelengths, with longer ones appearing as red or orange and shorter ones as blue or green. When sunlight touches the ocean, it interacts with water molecules. If there's only water in the mix, the shorter blue wavelengths are more likely to scatter, making the ocean look blue. The longer red wavelengths, on the other hand, get absorbed near the surface. Let's understand why the ocean looks different in various places. The depth and the ocean floor have a say in whether the surface looks like a dark navy blue, seen in parts of the Atlantic, or a vibrant or lighter blue, as in tropical areas. According to Feldman, in places like Greece, the water gets its beautiful turquoise color from the white sand or rocks at the bottom. When light hits the seabed, it bounces back up, reflecting light and giving the water that lovely light blue hue. However, in most parts of the ocean, it's either dark navy blue or completely dark because light can't go very deep, usually not beyond 6 and 56 feet. Consider this. The ocean is hardly ever crystal clear. It's usually full of tiny plants, animals, suspended sediment, or contaminants. Oceanographers keep an eye on the color of the ocean, much like doctors check vital signs. The color you see on the ocean's surface tells a story about what's happening deep down in its vast waters. Feldman, who works at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland, examines images captured by the Sea Viewing Wide Field of View sensor satellite launched in 1997. Positioned over 400 miles or 644 kilometers above Earth, this satellite takes pictures of the ocean, revealing artistic swirls of colors reminiscent of Van Gogh's paintings. These patterns are not just captivating. They also indicate areas where sediment and runoff might give the water a muddy brown color and where tiny plants called phytoplankton gather in nutrient-rich waters often giving it a light green tint. Phytoplankton, these tiny ocean plants, use a green pigment called chlorophyll to harness energy from the sun. They then convert water and carbon dioxide into organic compounds through a process called photosynthesis. Interestingly, this photosynthesis by phytoplankton contributes to about half of the oxygen we breathe. While most phytoplankton make the ocean water look green, some can give it shades of yellow, reddish, or brown, as explained by Feldman. When oceans have a lot of phytoplankton, they can look blue-green or green, with the shade depending on how many phytoplankton are present. Even though greenish water might not seem attractive, as Feldman points out, if it weren't for phytoplankton, we wouldn't be here. Phytoplankton play a crucial role as the foundation of the food web, serving as the main food source for zooplankton, which are small animals eaten by fish. These fish in turn become the meals for larger animals like whales and sharks. When oceans get polluted with runoff, the level of phytoplankton can rise to unhealthy levels. These tiny plants feed on the pollutants, grow rapidly, and eventually die. As they sink to the bottom, they decompose, a process that removes oxygen from the water, leading to depletion. Over the last 50 years, the size of ocean zones with low oxygen has increased more than fourfold, reaching an area about the size of the European Union, or 17 and 28 though 99 square miles, or 4 Thor 75 755 square kilometers. A study from January 2018 in the journal Science highlighted this. One factor behind this trend could be the rise in ocean temperature linked to climate change, as warmer water holds less oxygen. In coastal regions, the excessive growth of phytoplankton, known as blooms, is thought to be a contributing factor. While phytoplankton is crucial for the ocean food chain, Feldman emphasizes, too much of a good thing is not a good thing. In Feldman's office, there's a map with a marker highlighting a place where human activity is minimal, and the ocean water is among the clearest globally. This spot is off the coast of Easter Island in the Southeast Pacific Ocean. The water here is exceptionally clear and deep, thanks to its location within a massive circular current known as an oceanic gyre. Because of its central position, 
there's little mixing of different ocean layers and nutrients from the deep don't get pushed up. The combination of water purity and depth gives the ocean in this area a distinctive deep indigo color, unlike anywhere else. And there you have it, a quick exploration into the depths of ocean colors. If you enjoyed this quick note, give us a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to A Quick Note for more fascinating insights. Thanks for watching.